Thank you, praise team. John chapter 10, verse 3, as you return to your seats. It's Bible study night, and there's nothing greater. What an incredible and wonderful, outstanding uh, Sunday we had here at Eastgate Church last Sunday. I can't wait for Sunday night when we will reveal what I have no doubt is uh, the greatest pledge that's probably been ever, ever been made in Southeast Texas, and uh, perhaps in Texas as a whole. And I know we're going to do, and God is going to continue to do what He has promised through us, through His people, the least likely places, the least likely people. And yet God says, I'm going to take it so that they don't get the credit. And we're fine not getting the credit. We're, we're totally fine just pointing up to heaven and saying, yeah, that ain't got nothing to do with us. That ain't got nothing to do with the city. That's got everything to do with God. And uh, what an overwhelming week we, we've had just counting and seeing and watching the incredible work of God's people and it's overwhelming it really is I'm so thankful for his goodness amen we are in someone says someone I say it often we are in revival amen we are in harvest amen and, and while you're harvesting you can't fail to continue to plant sometimes you're so busy reaping you forget you got to keep sowing because if you once you reap you have nothing left to sow does that make sense so we keep praying, we keep reaching, we keep doing outreach, you keep, amen, because that's, that's in just a few months after we've re done all the reaping, we want to do some more reaping. And uh, I believe that we can take, I believe that we are in a perpetual place where until the rapture happens, we will be in a place where we are reaping the harvest, amen, that God has for his church, his people, and uh, amen. God's good. God's good. We had 680 people here on Sunday, and and at a 20% growth rate, uh, we're going to have to get that thing up pretty quick and in a hurry. Amen. God is doing great things. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Amen. I appreciate it. It's amazing what happens when God's people start praying. They start fasting. And, uh, man, it's hard to do. But once you see the results of it, you're like, man, that was awesome. That was worth it. And uh, I'm so thankful for it. It's been great. John chapter 10 and 3, to him. The porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. I spoke last, uh, not last, but the previous time I taught on Wednesday night a couple uh, weeks ago on hearing the voice. And this is the continuation. I did not finish. This is the continuation of hearing the voice of God. Just look at your neighbor and say, God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to you. Father, thank you for this Wednesday night Bible study as we turn to the timeless pages of your word upon which we've determined, decided, Father, and declared to build our lives. I pray, Father, now that you would anoint me, bring to memory that which we've placed there in study, that we can reveal it, Lord, to your people, that it would benefit them, carry them through today not only but the remainder of their lives and as one people we say in Jesus name amen as you're seated why don't we put our hands together you look nice tonight look at your neighbor and say you're looking good all right well some of y'all are married and didn't say it uh, there is a marriage retreat and now you're gonna need that one hallelujah so you ought to always say you look good to to that one, that wife, amen. Look to the person, other person next to you and say, you're looking pretty good. You're not looking as good as that other person uh, because I picked them first, uh, but you look good. It is the job of a pastor to teach his flock to hear the voice of God. I said it and I've said it, I said it last time and I re restate that tonight that, that it is not my duty or responsibility to hear from God for you as an individual. Uh, matter of fact, I can't do that. Um, and so I have to, to teach you to hear from the vo word of the Lord. And I, I preface this again and re remind you that God's voice as he speaks to you, he will never bypass or should I say give you an alternate to what his holy word says. So the Bible is always the filter for a sermon. Uh, for a word, for a whisper, whatever you feel, amen, if it is, it is counter the word of the Lord or it conflicts with the word of the Lord, then you would say, this is the trump card, amen, this is the one that always is right, this Bible, amen, <laughs> praise God, so God, I, I know, I told you this, recapping last time, God desires to speak to us, yeah. I said, God wants to speak, first thing he did with man is they started having a conversation, and as I said, he did not, uh, man did not initiate the conversation, it was God. 
God would come down, kick him in the, in the side or head or whatever, however he woke him up and said, hey, bud, let's go talk. I want to talk to you. I've been holding it in. I got a conversation. We need to talk. Uh, how, how cool is that, that God initiates conversation with man? And, and I want you to know that he is still initiating conversation with man. Over 2,000 times in the Old Testament, it says, Thus saith the Lord, or God spoke, or uh, the Lord said, or the word of the Lord came unto. And this is saying that God is speaking. And so we realize that when someone says, The Lord said to me, or the Lord spoke to me, uh, sometimes that we can be a little bit apprehensive in our in human nature, but really we should take it serious and be in awe and the wonder that God would speak to us. That God would speak to us. Uh, we talked about some reasons why uh, people are uh, perhaps unable to hear from the Lord, and then we concluded with the the essentiality of hearing from God. That hearing from God isn't optional. Uh, drinking water is not optional. We all just discovered that eating food. Come on, I ought to get an amen right there. I, I was preaching about Kraft macaroni and cheese and they were running the aisle Sunday morning. Come on now, you know. Food is not optional. You, you, you've got to eat. You've got to have air. Uh, these are optional. And your connection to God is not optional. Hearing from God and making a connection with God, your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit, uh, it is essential for your spiritual life. You've got to hear from God or you're going to die or you're going to feel dead. You'll feel dead if you ain't hearing from God. But if you get a word from God, I'm going to tell you there's not an Alani, a Celsius, or a monster drink that can get you awake like a word from God. You, you don't need none of that. I, I don't. Come on. Yeah, I drank one of them one time. Well, I drank them about 10 times, maybe 10, 15. My wife likes those Celsius drinks. and They're actually quite nasty. But they, they do, man, they give you a little buzz. You're like, whoo, man, my heart's beating. And I, sometimes on Sunday, I, I have to drink one, you know, because it's Sunday. But, uh, but, man, if you get a word from God, there's nothing like it. Amen? It's, uh, it's incredible. And we learn that God is an extrovert. He's not an introvert. He's not over there, you know, in a corner, and you got to pull him out, and there's nothing wrong with people like that. But God's not one of those. He's out and about just talking. He was talking to you today. He had a whole conversation with you today. He did. He talked to you today all day long. He rattled. He just was talking and talking and talking. All day long he's been talking to you. And here's the thing. Did you hear him? Here, did you hear him? So we have to understand how to hear from the Lord. Uh, much like our personalities, the way that we hear from God is different. You know, there's this... Uh, I can't remember his name that wrote the five love languages. Chapman, I think it is. He wrote, uh, Gary Chapman, yeah, wrote the five love languages, the five love languages. You know, they always come up with a good idea, and then they just keep going, you know. Five love languages for your kids, for your dog, for your fish. You know, I'm like, man, how do you feel you speak the love language of my fish? It's a, it seems one to, you know. But anyway, the guy really capitalized off that idea. But he had a great point, the five different love languages, understanding that the love language you speak might, might not be the one that your spouse or kid speaks. And so knowing the language gets you on the same page, understanding that their personality and character Character will play into how they receive and reciprocate love towards you. And so as we look at hearing from the Lord, it's important to understand that we are all different. And I know that's a great revelation to everybody that, that, that's not married. <laughs> but all the married people know we are different. And so to hear from God, it's not just understanding how God speaks to us. I said it's more than understanding how God speaks to us. It's how we listen to Him. Does that make sense? God is speaking to us. But I think as we look at Scripture, we can see that there are different ways that we hear from Him. And in my, my study of it, I, can, I found four. Perhaps there are some others, but definitely four that I think will cover the vast majority of you and help you understand who you are and how God speaks to you so that you can hear what thus saith the Lord to you. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 and 8, a familiar passage, the Bible reads, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. 
Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thy, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. It is here that we see this first personality uh, that, that you would be, that you would fall into, someone, how they hear God, would be what I call the hearer, hearing from God. Hearers, hearing from, they, they receive the word of the Lord through words or phrases. It's sentences uh, that, that seemingly these, these that hear from God, these hearers have a direct line from God. His voice that, that interrupts their th thoughts. They, they, they hear from God almost as in real time, play by play. They, they, when someone like this hears from God, they know exactly where it was, what he said, what they were wearing, and they wrote it down. They hear from God. Uh, my, my dear friend, I talk to him every day, Brother Herring, he, he hears from God that way. He's got a journal full of the things the Lord has spoke to him. And, and, uh, and so he, they, he will speak in conversation. When God speaks to them, it is an activation of extreme and dynamic faith. Nothing can stop a person when they have heard from God in this way. It is uh, whether that's an intuition or a thought, but normally it's a thought in, in, their, in their mind that God speaks to them. And so they begin to journal a story tell, an inner voice, uh, something supernatural that happens in their faith level. And they can get up and say, the Lord told me. And you don't doubt whether the Lord said it or not. It ain't like, well, I wonder. You're like, no, he, it, he heard from God. He heard from God. It is a clear voice that will speak to these people. Perhaps you hear it. And God's voice in this context to this personality will be clearer than the thoughts you're thinking. As a matter of fact, you'll be in a certain train of thought and all of a sudden, a diff it'll be completely off track. But it will be clearer than the, the, even the thought that you had and be louder uh, you in, as you learn to hear from God. It may not have anything that you think to be super spiritual. It might be something random that doesn't fit in, but you sense it very clearly. And then a few days later, you'll, 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 you'll recognize that, that word again or that phrase and you'll link it back to when God said it here. Oh man, that was God. God spoke to me in that setting. Amen. And then you become more confident in that, that hearing from the Lord. Uh, most uh, books and you read or sermons preached, conversations had about hearing the voice of the Lord would focus on this personality, this person that hears from God. And those of us that do not hear from God, perhaps in that manner, can be left to, to feel quite carnal. Um, but they have a weakness as well. The personality, you know, the thing I like about the five love languages is they tell you the strengths of that personality, but they also tell you your weaknesses. And, uh, and so sometimes if this is how God speaks to you, guard yourself because you'll tend to think that that's the only way God can speak to people. You'll start to think that the only way God speaks to people is the way he speaks to you. And uh, then you will start to declare it to people. God will speak and, and people will become dependent on you being their, the ears for them. Okay? And then people start holding you at a standard that you cannot maintain. And, and you, develop, you can develop a God complex and you've got to be very careful. Uh, Samuel was definitely a hearer. Paul heard from the Lord in this manner. Peter heard from the Lord in this manner. John heard a voice from the Lord in the same manner. Uh, the next uh, one that I would call is in 2 Samuel 24 and 11. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord, and I'm going quickly, came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, now the, the first one we talked about is in person that would hear from the Lord, and you know the Lord spoke to me. Is there anybody here that says, yes, I've, I've, I can say the Lord has spoke to me in that manner. Just wave at me. Amen. It's all right. Good. You, all right. You're not weird if you haven't. You're, and he, but then, then there's the seer. God, God speaks to some in, in, in the forms of dreams or uh, daydreams. It can be pictures, images, or visions. They, they see. They see. And it is this, this way that God speaks to them in that they see the world a little different. They'll see... Uh, someone who is being spoken to by God visually will see oftentimes the end of a thing and it seems so much bigger than they can accomplish on their own. Uh, they will see things without the details in between, but they'll just see what is to happen. I had someone that God spoke to him like this and, and they were, uh, had a small business looking for a brick and mortar and it was a, a female, and she said, I, uh, she said, Pastor Tuttle, I, I saw the building that I am going to have. 
and uh, she just started this thing up, this little business retail shop or whatever she's selling clothing. And um, and 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 uh, she said, "I saw the building. I know exactly what it looks like." And so she began to look for the building. And uh, two years later, she, the exact building came up for sale. On, on Color the door, the whole rigmarole. When she pulled up, she didn't have to say, well, I wonder if this is the right one. God had already spoke to her and showed her what was to come. Amen. That's God speaking to you. That's God speaking. Visions that drive. These, these, these that see, or, or seer as I may call them, uh, their faith also will be extremely bold. They, they will have no boundaries around the abilities that God has. A supernatural uh, uh, faith to believe for things that are so incredibly large. They, they will see victory where it seems impossible. A seer's favorite quote might be Robert Kennedy saying, Some men see things as they are and ask why. But I dream of things that never were and ask why not. The, the, this is what perhaps the world may call a visionary. But I don't think it's just a visionary leader. I, I think it's seeing through the lens of heaven, through the lens of faith, uh, seeing what will happen, amen, before it's ever happened. God is showing them what is to come, amen. Like a telescope, uh, their, their, their ability to see things. It, it, there, there will be some challenges for this personality as well. You'll have some, person, some problems and challenges. Is that the, the perspective that this, this eternal perspective perhaps that you have for the season that you are in or, or that you are coming into might be challenging for your peers to relate to. It will be hard to put it into words. You can see it, but I can't say it. And those of you that God speaks to you in this way, you understand what I'm saying. You'll see it. I know I can see it, but I don't have the details. And this will bring you, can bring you to a place of loneliness. Now, the hearer has the date, the time, the place, the location. The seer just sees it. Okay? I don't know when. I don't know how. I just know it is going to happen. You're going to hear that a lot. It's going to happen. God can speak to us all in different ways at different times. However, I do believe there are primary ways that God speaks to you. And it, it, it relates to who you are as a person. Just like there's different love languages, you'll have a primary. It doesn't mean you don't have others or can use others, but you'll have a primary. I would say that this is definitely the way that God speaks to me. Uh, I've told you before of, of, of how my, my little, our little story when we were in the Netherlands. I'd been there a year and uh, got the call that they wanted us to get pastor in Los Angeles, California. And so we went and uh, they voted us. We voted us in. And uh, but I was wrestling with whether or not it was right. And in prayer, I just couldn't find peace. But I sure did like Los Angeles, huh? and uh, you know, huh? Van Nuys, right by Hollywood. And uh, and so I, I remember Brother Linder. I talked to him. And he said, uh, he said, Matthew, does do you have a vision for what the church can be? And I said, man, I don't see it. I don't see it. I can't see it. And uh, that's weird because normally I can. I can look at a McDonald's and see something better than a McDonald's. You know what I mean? It's just my, it's how God speaks to me. Um, and so I, I, I did. Obviously, I, I'm an inviter. <laughs> I didn't go. <laughs> Amen. So then I came to uh, Vider. It was four years later. I was in Vider, Texas on an Easter Sunday morning in 2015, my first service of three that I would preach. And um, I, I remember preaching that day. Brother Edwards had not made any mention of me uh, pastoring at all. We had a good service, uh, but for the context of it, uh, I was pastoring a, a church in the Netherlands that had people from every continent habitable. We didn't have anybody from Antarctica, but we did have every other continent represented, very multi wild, first generations. You know, I mean, it's like it is now. I'll run and pew jump and devil stomping, and, and y'all Eastgate people was dignified. I'm talking like Speckler, Speckler Ron White. That's the whitest thing you can be. Y'all was white. My wife, we got in the car. I'm just going to be honest. She was like, ooh, that sure wasn't head gear punch. I said, I know, but I saw it. You can ask her. I said, I saw it. I remember standing here. I looked right over there. And then I scanned my eyes across the platform, this congregation. I didn't know what was happening at the moment. I know now. But I saw the building completely full of people. And that's why I'm here. Six months later, I came. 
And, and I, Brother Linder said, do you see it for Vider? Do you? I said, yeah. I said, I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see kids in the Sunday school in it completely packed. I can see our community coming to our church. I didn't know it would be called Light of Vider, but I saw it. I, I, I could see people outside of the doors and coming. Come on, I've seen the police cars. I saw the police cars holding back the traffic so that we could get them all inside. And I've seen the building. Come on, I've stood in front of the building. I've seen the International Training Center, a new building. I've seen the new building. I... Come on, I've seen a city that's known for racism that will be known for righteousness. I've seen multicultural. I've, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. And see, come on. And when you see it, it gives you a boldness to say it's going to happen. Well, how are you going to do that, inviter? I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it. How many times have you heard me say it? How can you say that, Brother Tuttle? Because I've seen it. And when God gives you a word, you can stand up and say and that's why when people come to me all worried, oh God, this is happening, they're saying this, they're doing this, they're posting that, I can get up and say, doesn't matter, I've got a word from God. The only thing that can happen is you get hit by the train called revival. You better come on, because when God gives you a word, when God gives you a word, you can stand on the word. You can stand on the word of God. Jacob saw a ladder. Joseph saw his future. Paul looked into heaven. John saw heaven. Amen? And we're here today because someone saw it. Come on. Someone saw. And because they saw it, it was accomplished. And dreams is how God speaks. I, I, I don't have enough time, and we'll take a lesson perhaps, maybe, if I need a filler one night, and talk about dreams. But dreams are spiritual things. Psalm 16, 7 says, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. Okay? Next one. So there's God speaks to people and they hear from God. They, 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 they know that is, it's the voice of God. Others he'll speak through, they will show them things. Psalms 30 and 11. Thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girdeth me with gladness. There will be those that see, there will be others that hear, and there will be some that feel. I, uh, I have a dear friend, uh, Brother Bounds, that I travel with sometimes, and, and he is, God speaks to him through feeling. And we'll drive through cities, and he'll say, Matt, pull over. He said, I just feel such a burden here. He said, let's pray. He said, and he'll say, I feel darkness here. He said, I feel peace. I feel peace. I remember being with them once and we were in a restaurant. He said, the lady said, I feel pain. She began to weep. She said, I'm, I'm hurting physically, diagnosed with some, I can't remember the name of the disease. And of course we prayed for her. He would rejoice. I feel joy. I feel victory. I'll call him sometimes and say, what you feeling about me? <laughs> How you feel about me today, Brother Bounds? Am I going to be all right? God will speak through feelings, this Emotion or sensation, um, an unusual sensitivity they will have to their surroundings. Yeah. Understanding the subtext of what is going on in the room while others don't, because God is speaking to them through feeling. A feeler can perceive spiritual things that, that, that other people perhaps miss. We don't, of course, walk by our feelings, but let me tell you, God does use our feelings. I'll say that again, he'll use your feelings. And sometimes people say, well, you know, you can't trust your feelings. And that's the case in, in some cases. However, let's not deny that God did give you feelings. Amen. And so if God gave us feelings, there must be a reason for feelings. He, he didn't just give you feelings so you could get high and enjoy those feelings a little more. He didn't give you feelings to stimulate those feelings through, through Hollywood or, or sports or entertainment of the world. Or he gave you feelings so that he could communicate to you. Because he's an extrovert. He says, I'm going to use your ears. He said, I'm going to use your eyes. I'm going to use your feelers. I'm just going to talk to you all the time. Come on, somebody. I just always want to be talking to you. Come on. So there's sometimes... There's a song and the kids or girls are like, well, you know, it, it's, this ain't a bad song. I'll say, you know, it don't got no bad words in it, but it just don't feel right. Well, this, this guy's a good guy, Dad, and, you know, he goes to the church over there. I say, yeah, good guy, but, you know, I know he's got a tie and a suit, but 
Man, I just got a bad feeling about that guy. I wish I had a dad that's got a feeler, a mama that knows what I'm talking about. You know, it's just like, I, well, well, where exactly in the Bible does it say that thou shalt? I don't know. It just doesn't feel. It's like, I, it's just, just, I just don't, it doesn't feel right. Amen? It's an awareness that some people do not have. A heart, it's a heart connection. It, I, I don't believe it's just emotion. I believe it truly is God. And this isn't just emotional people. Some, some of the dudes are like, they're afraid to bob their head right now. They're like, oh, yeah, this is the women. The feely people, you know. It's not true. I'm telling you, it's not true. God will speak through the feelings to, any, to, to anyone. Uh, I remember we were in, in Baytown preaching and, uh, when we were evangelizing and, and uh, we had... The, the, the week before, two weeks before, we had, uh, as I've told you the story, buried little Vera, and uh, Michelle, that was her first Sunday back, and uh, I was preaching there for Brother Kenny Grant, and Michelle was sitting with, on the front or first, second row, and she, uh, it was hard, obviously, and she just said, you know, I need, I just need to know you love me, God, that's what she said, and the, the song leader said, hold on, stop the song. He said, I just feel like someone needs to know that God loves them. Yes. Maybe when you're at Walmart and you walk by that person and you feel, maybe that's not just, maybe you should stop and say, hey, I just had a feeling. Is everything all right, man? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe you're walking into a room and you're like, hold on, I don't feel right about this. Maybe you should turn, you should turn around and walk out. Maybe you should listen. Maybe that's God trying to speak to you. Maybe, maybe that man, come on, you're dating. You just got this feeling. Maybe, come on, I know he checks all the boxes, but maybe that's God trying to speak to you. Remember the last time you felt it and you ignored it? How did it end up? That'll kind of give you some indication whether or not it was God or not. Sometimes you hear, you hear him, sometimes you see him, and sometimes you feel him. Because God is always, always speaking to you. He's speaking. I mean, he said the shortest verse in the Bible is one about his feelings. And it, it wasn't a woman, it was a man. God robed in the flesh. First time I came, you know, I came to... Southeast Texas, it was 2005 or six. I'd just been married. Man, all these dudes down here working refineries. Lord, like, oh boy, they're. And I thought these are tough. Die good. And Brother Wilkins, you know what I mean? I'm like, whoo, man, these guys are manly men, you know. And so I bought 17 guns. I still haven't shot them. I just bought them, you know. I was like, I'm gonna have one so I can say I've got one, just so you know they think, you know. I got camo at the house too, guys, and boots. I just don't know. I don't even know how to put it on, you know. I put camo on, can't see myself in the mirror, and I'm like, man, that's you know, that's not worth anything. I, But I figured out even these big old tough, redneck, hard-nosed, oil refinery boys. Come on now. Holy Ghost begin to move, and all of a sudden you'll see tears start strickling out. Come on now. You'll start seeing something begin. I don't care how tough you are, how big you are, how bad you are, how many. Come on, how you weld with, without a face mask. It don't matter. You, God can speak to you. God can speak to you. He wants to speak to you. I said he wants to speak to you. And you can feel him. You feel him on the job. You, you go ahead and listen to him. Hallelujah. Emotion isn't a sin. Emotion isn't a sin. I speak of that often, but the Bible says be angry. That's an emotion. And it's, a lot of people think it's sin to get angry. It ain't a sin to get angry. Jesus is flipping over tables. That's one of my favorite stories of Jesus, by the way. You know what I mean? I just want to go sometimes into staff meeting and flip over that table and be like, Jesus did it. That's how I feel about things, you know. <laughs> what you feel is not a sin. I'll say it again. Because some people, the devil beat you up for what you feel. What you feel is not a sin. What you do is the sin. I... Feelings are like waves. They, you can't stop waves. You pick which one you're going to surf on. 
You know what I mean? I'm out there, and I'm, I'm not a surfer, but I get one of them boogie boards, and I try. And I, I'm way out there, and here comes one. I'm like, no, nah, not taking that one. Just let it go on by. You know what I mean? Comes another one. Ooh, that one's too big. Whoop, let that one go. That one's going to kill me if I take that one. And, and most of the day, me and Lewis out there, I just pretty much do this. It takes a lot of work to get out there. You know what I mean? It's like all the work to get out there, 10 seconds to get back, and then I got to go all the way back. It's like skiing, you know? A lot of work and little reward, kind of. You got to go all the way up this mountain, takes forever, can stand this stupid line, and then choo, whatever. Oh, that's a whole, I'm, now I'm going to tick off the ski. I got the hunting people against me. Okay, I love to ski. All right, I love you, ski people. I love, I love to surf people. But just because there's a wave doesn't mean I have to get on it. Just because there's an emotion, just because there's a feeling, doesn't mean I have to respond to it. Let me say that again. You're going to feel jealous. That doesn't mean you tell, tear people down. You're going to get angry. You don't punch them in the face. Come on now. You don't cuss them out. You're going to feel disappointed. That's life. You're going to feel disappointed. But when you feel disappointed, it doesn't make your mission to destroy. You're going to feel attraction. Oh, boy, now everybody's getting nervous. He's like, oh, boy. He's going to get on that. That Yeah, yeah. But just because you feel attraction doesn't mean it demands action. You know, that's a false pretense. Well, I, I'm attracted to a man, so I must be homosexual. No. You don't ride that way. You, you don't, come on. Well, I was born a homosexual. I was born an adulterer then. We all like, ooh, hey, welcome to Wednesday night. It's, un it's just all the kids are out, not rated. I said, if that's the truth, I was an adulterer because I've been attracted to all kinds of women that aren't my wife. But you know how to do it. Don't ride the wave. You are not what you feel. If I am what I feel... You talk about bipolar. I'm like Octuba bazillion polar. I'm all kinds of weird things. I mean, I've been Michael Jordan. <laughs> I've, been, I've been Neil Armstrong. I've been all kinds of crazy things. If everything I felt is what I was, that's just not true. The devil is a liar trying to condemn you because you had some feeling. You got angry. and you. No, the devil's a liar. You got angry, but you didn't punch nobody. Okay, so you looked at this woman. You thought she was beautiful. You didn't sleep with her. You didn't take her home with you in your head. She was beautiful. Move on. Come on, somebody. You had, come on, you struggled with the thought that was not pure. Okay, guess what? Just because you thought it, just because you felt it, doesn't mean you are. And thank God for his mercy. Thank God for grace. Thank God that I'm not what I feel. I am what I do. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to live for God. You know what I did do? I did what I didn't feel like. I danced anyway. I clapped anyway. I shouted anyway. Because if I am what I do, I'm going to do what I don't feel. Because doing what I, come on, do what's right even when you don't feel it. Because that's what you are. Well, that was wonderful and free. Sometimes I do things, I'm like, I could have made a whole study out of that. And I'm 42. I've got, how many more years? got a lot of talking left to do, you know. Emotions. You know, emotions make our lives rich. Can you imagine a life without emotion? Wouldn't that be horrible not to feel the joy of, of, of a newborn child? To feel the emotion of your bride walking down that aisle? Come on now. That'd be awful. Jeremiah is, is known in Scripture. You know what we call Jeremiah? The, the what prophet? The feely prophet. He was a feeler. He was a weeper. The Bible says that Jesus would look at a crowd of people. He would look at people. And he would feel compassion. You ever felt that? You ever just walk down the street, people coming towards you? You just get overwhelmed with compassion? How do we reach all these people? You ever go to the mall, just in Beaumont, just walking through there, and there's all these people coming. You're, you're like, my God, how do we get, how do we, all these people are going to hell. Does that ever just overwhelm you? I believe that's God speaking to us saying the harvest is ripe it's ready come on and then he's going to lead you to the, 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 the one that's hungry come on how, how do I know which one there's so many there's 8 billion I don't know where to start you know what I've got to do I've got to hear from God I've got to hear from God 
I've got to feel, I've got to see, I've got to hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And you'll start feeling it. Now, someone who feels God, you're going to experience God deeply personal. It'll move your heart and emotions. And uh, sometimes the initial feelings as God, as you start to learn how God speaks, it can be like, man, is something wrong with me? Am I like mentally unstable? Uh, something wrong with me? Is this a season in my life? And if you're a woman, you might be like, man, maybe it's that time. You know, I, you just feel all kinds of things, you know? Feelings. I'm glad, Brother Larry. That's a good thing. You don't ever feel that. Amen. I feel like God uses feeling in, 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 in intercessors. People who are called to intercede, which I think we all are, but some have a specific, specific anointing for it. In, intercessor comes from a Latin word meaning inter, uh, uh, between. Inter means between. And seder meaning to move or to go. So the, the most, not to oversimplify the subject, but it really means to go between. Intercede means to go between, between God and a situation, between God and a person. That's what an intercessor is doing. They are going between. They're stepping in between. There's, I'm going to tell you, I think I'm alive here today because I had a mother who got in between. I, w I wish I had somebody that, I, I wish I had a boy that had a praying mama, that had a praying grandmama and say, the only reason I'm here is because the devil tried some things. I got Brother Jerry over there saying, I can clap, stand up and clap my hands because I had a, come on, Joey, you had a grandfather and a grandmother that got up in between the devil's plan. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so God will, will speak to people and, and, and especially in particular intercessors through feelings, feelings of empathy, compassion. Uh, the challenge that you're going to face is, is that you have, an, you have a desire or, or you're not a desire, but you can tend to accumulate these feelings and allow them to weigh you down. You'll own everything you feel. There's a danger with those that are, that are feelers, that are intercessors. And uh, all of a sudden, as you take all this on you, you'll feel powerless. You'll feel uh, helpless. And, and, uh, and, and you should not be feeling powerless. You should not be feeling helpless. You should say, this is my call to intercession. That casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Hallelujah. And so intercessory prayer, it, it's a burden. Amen. But it doesn't mean you have to bear it. Okay. Let me say it again, when God is moving on you and you begin to feel the weight around you, it can become overwhelming. All of these things you're feeling, come on, you're feeling this from that and this and that, and all of a sudden you, you feel it and you, become, you can become depressed, you can become anxious. No, what you need to do is get down and intercede. Get between, come on, if you feel so and so's going through anxiety, whatever fear it is that they're going through, you get down on your knees and you pray. And someone asked me, how long should I intercede? You intercede until you have joy. Amen. You intercede until you have peace. That's how you know, come on, that's how you know it's gone. That's your job. Your job is to take that burden and bring it to God. Then once it's in his hands, uh, there will be peace. To, come on, follow peace with all men. Follow peace. Uh, and the peace of God, the Bible says, is going to come upon you. Uh, So I have to learn how to navigate these feelings or I'll end up leave, broken, heavy, overwhelmed. I have to give it back. I have to give it back to God. Yeah. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, you got to give it back to God. So you know God, the way that God speaks to some of us, a primary way would be that they hear from God. They know the place, the time, the location. They've written it down, they're journalers. There's others that they, they have seen. Amen? That's their primary. There's others that have felt. The last one we'll talk about tonight, Job 38 and 36 says, Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts, or who hath given understanding to the heart? The final one was be to know. To know. Um, these, the challenge, starting with the challenge here with people that just, here is a, like, anybody like that? you like, I just know. You know, in my gut, some of us call it gut. That's what the Bible calls it, by the way. It's, it's, I just, I just know, I know. And the challenge is that sometimes you will feel like since God, since in this knower, 
as I'm calling them tonight, it's not really linked to a sense or emotion. You can have a feeling that, well, I'm not very spiritual because, you know, the, the seers are seeing and the hearers are hearing and the feelers are feeling, but I ain't got no sense. I just... I just know, Brother George. I just know that boy's wrong. I don't feel nothing. I just know. I ain't seen nothing. God ain't hurt, said nothing. I just know that's the wrong girl for my boy. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Have anybody ever had that to you? Ever happen? You're like, man, I just know this is the wrong job. And your wife's going, baby, no, I just know. I just know. It's God's way of speaking. It's the way, God's way of letting you know and directing you. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's not... It's not hypersensitive and linked to emotions, but it's, it's just a, a clarity of conviction. It is a knower who with clarity and understanding and, and, and with, with the knowledge comes wisdom typically. A knower will have an ability to know the best way forward. Come on. That's why you've got to get together with a church family. That's why when God begins to speak to you, I believe he gave us each other so that he can, come on, he can give us different pieces to, of the puzzle. And while he is speaking to us, he is always speaking. Always remember, eye hath not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man. Those are the three ways, three of the four ways that God speaks to you. That which he has prepared, he's always got some more. He's always got some more. Amen. Uh, and so it is that the, the knower's faith life is rooted in this, this sense of instinct almost. When they know, there's almost a sense of urgency. You, if, you don't, if you aren't a knower, you know one. Because the minute they know, it's like, we got to do it right now. we got to go. We've got to go right now. We've got to build that right. Why are we not out there with a bulldozer right now? Now I found all the knowers because you all been texting me. You're like, man, I've got my, my 35 horse tractor. I'm ready to go. Let's put this thing on. Let's get it up there. I've, I've got my two by fours. I tore, tore down a house and saved the two by fours. Let's build this church. Come on. You're, I know we're doing the right thing. I'm ready to go. What are we waiting on? You know, that's the knower. You just know it's time to have revival. You know it's right. You know, I know it's right. Come on. I just know. I, I'm determined. And they have this, the, they have internal, like these light bulb moments. Just boom. Man, I know. Job in 38 and 36, it says, Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts, as we read, who hath given understanding to the heart. God using this, this understand, who hath given wisdom, that, that means wit or intuition. Okay? God gave it to you. Intuition. Okay? An understanding, to know. That's what that what literally means. Uh, who given understanding is to know perfectly. Joseph was a dreamer God spoke to him through seeing but notice that when he interprets the dream of Pharaoh not only brother Emerson does he interpret the dream he knows isn't that interesting that he also knew what to do he said here's the interpretation of the dream and the the king didn't ask for much more he said so here's what you need to do you need to do, be a build barns and you need to store up for seven years and, you do, 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 do. and the king said dude you the boss man he got to become the second most powerful man in the world from a prison to, pot, to the uh, palace. You, let me tell you how. He did it because he knew how to hear from God. And if you can learn how to hear from God, you'll know which interview to go into. You'll know which call to take. You'll know which person to come on to speak to. God will give you favor. Come on, somebody. You got to know. You got to know. Elisha, he knew. He said, the rain's coming. It's going to come. Let's build, dig some, dig some holes in the ground. We need to keep this water. Paul knew there was going to be danger before it ever arrived. Matter of fact, they would have avoided a shipwreck if they'd have just listened to the man of God who knew. So, man, it ain't good. It ain't gonna be good. I, don't, I, I just, I just know we shouldn't go on this trip. Ah, we're gonna go anyway. Pow, flat tire. Boom. Come on now. We ain't gonna make it much worse than that. We'll stop at a flat tire tonight. It's Wednesday night. But anybody ever just, anybody ever say, man, I knew better. Man, I just knew I shouldn't have done that. Maybe that wasn't just some kind of coincidence. Maybe God was trying to speak to you. 
I'm just trying to tell you what I'm trying to teach you tonight is to tell you that God might be trying to speak to you a whole lot more than what you realize that some of the things you're thinking and some of the things you're feeling and some of the things you're seeing and some of the things you're knowing maybe not just random maybe that's the almighty divine God looking down at you saying hey Jeremy I want to speak to you hey Mickey I want to speak to you hey Stephen I want to speak to you I want to I want to give you the right place to go the right contract to sign come on Doc Burke I want to speak to you and so I, listen listen to me listen to me Jesus knew their thoughts the Bible says in 9 and 4 Jeremiah says I, I the Lord search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings I've taught you this before but the word reins here literally means kidneys or internal organs but it literally means kidney and then the continuation of that is internal organ what he's saying is Heart and gut. <laughs> I just feel it in my. I would say, I, I was saying, my gut's God. Just got a feeling. Brother, brother uh, Van Dorn, I just, you ever had that? Like, I just, God just got a feeling. I just got this gut. It's in my gut. I've bought houses in Holland, in America, just on a gut. Every time. See one come up, like, I'm going to do that deal. And then I've done others where it didn't, you know why? It's God. If my gut says it's, I just trust that you're like, well, that's just your gut. Nope. I believe it's God. And every time I've felt that, it's always worked. Isn't that amazing? You're like, well, how do I know? Try it. Try it. What you got to lose? What you got to lose next time you're at the market basket? Come on, you're checking out. What's the worst thing she can think? You're weird. They already think we're weird. And being weird is really cool in 2024. Haven't you looked around and noticed people are painting their hair pink and like cutting off their all kinds of things. I'm not going to talk about it. I mean, like it, they already think they are, they're weird. I, I told somebody that this week. I'm like, man, if you want to be weird, is in the Bible says, talking to somebody, hey, if you want to be weird, join the Pentecostals. Come on, are, are we, you want to rebel against the system. Join the rebellion. You really want to be a rebel? Wear a skirt. Come on. You want, don't cut your hair and be holy. Join the team. How do I know he hurt? How do I know I heard from God? What did that word, thing you saw, thing you felt, thing you know, initiate in you? Brother Rodriguez, what did you? Faith comes by and by the faith comes by hearing the voice when you hear him speak you know what something will come in faith an energetic faith an energy faith come on you'll see it and you'll just feel it and be like you'll know it and you'll it's more than just knowing there's a faith linked to that knowing there's a faith linked to that gut. There's a faith linked to what I see. Come on, it's not just that I see the building. It's that there's a faith in God that, that pushes. Oh, I heard him. And that wasn't just my thought because when I heard him, I said, God, is that you? And then faith rose up inside of me. That's him. That's it. And all of a sudden, that energizing faith that drove me to believe, to buy, to do, to go, to say, to build, to grow, to do whatever. Come on, because it brought faith in my life. I'm done. I'm done. Last night, Lewis is preached. Don't, when I talk about my kids, don't bring it up to them. Okay? Don't laugh. I'm serious. That's a serious comment. Okay? I didn't get permission to talk about this one. So this is between us. It's not cool. Um, he was, he was, uh, he's preaching five minutes of fire tonight. And so he, we were at, uh, uh, that morning we were talking. He said, man, I don't know when I'm going to preach. I said, well, you need to pray about it. He said, all right. So last night I was on the phone. I can't remember. It was nine o'clock. Man, he, he ran, ran into my room. He's like, breathing heavy excited dad I gotta talk to you and I'm like I'm on the phone he's like well man, hang up I gotta talk to you <laughs> I'm like hey man I'm gonna have to call you right back hang up he's like dad he's like I saw something in the bible he said David danced he said I'm gonna preach this sermon called I'm a dance defender dance defender and I said 
Yeah, let's push that phone to the side. I think I could use a new sermon. I, 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 I'll come on now. So, man, I went in there. He had his little laptop open. He had a bunch of 14 different browsers. And he said, Dad, look at this, David. He said he danced in a linen ephod. He said, now here's the picture of a linen ephod. He said, it's kind of like a dress clothes. He said, David was dancing in his dress clothes. He said, you know what I'm going to tell him? I'm going to tell him if David can drink, dance in a suit, I can dance in a shirt. If David can dance in a tuxedo, I can. He had it typed out. I can dance in a T-shirt. He come on. He, he said, "Dad, I think it's going to get him excited." He said, and "Look at this, Dad." He said, "The first dancer in the Bible was a woman." He said, "Miriam was a woman and David was a boy." He said, "I'm going to tell him this." He said, "I'm going to tell him girls can dance and boys can dance." I'm going to preach defender of the dance. And that boy had sweat pouring down his face. He was trembling. You know why? Because he had heard from God. Come on, somebody, what are you saying? I'm saying if he'll speak to a 12-year-old boy, he'll speak to you. If he'll speak to a child, he'll speak to you. He's talking, he's talking, he's talking. Come on, do you need to hear him say, I love you? Listen, he's saying, I love you. Do you need to hear him say, I care? He'll say, I care. He's speaking, he's speaking as we stand. He's speaking. Oh, preacher, no, there's no way. There's no way he can speak to me. I'm, I'm too bad. No, you know the first person that talked to Adam after he sinned? God. After he sinned, Brother Barnard. He's not like us. I'm never talking to them again. Even after the man brought damnation to the world, he came by. Hey, Adam, where are you? I want to talk. I want to talk. Where you at? Man, we need to talk about this. You know, we just need to talk. Let's talk. I think if we talked, we could get it worked out. Where are you? Let's talk. And when Cain killed his brother, God didn't turn his back, Brother Goss. He looked out of heaven and said, Okay, let's talk. Let's talk. I want to talk about it. I think if we talk about it, that maybe, don't deny it. Don't lie to me. Be honest. And the lady who had five husbands, she ain't even his, his brand. Sits down at the well. He says, I gotta go. I've gotta go out of my way. That's what the Bible says. I gotta go out of my way. Why do you gotta go? There's somebody I gotta talk to. He has, traveling with Jesus. Be like traveling with my grandpa Sparks. Takes 15 hours longer because he's gonna talk to every single body. I gotta talk to the person that's checking me out, tell them about all this, and tell them I gotta know where they're from. I'm like, Grandpa, we gotta go. Come on now. But he said, no, i got to talk to her. Give me something to drink, woman. Well, what are you even doing? Why are you, talk Why are you talking to me? I'm not, she had that same complex, kind of. You shouldn't be talking to me. I'm not worthy to be talking to you. God said, I want to talk to you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how many times you've been married. I don't care who you've slept with. I don't care what you've smoked. I don't care what you've drank. I don't care what you said. Come on. I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you. Let me talk to you. Let me, do, let me tell you tonight what heaven's doing. He's knocking on some hearts at Eastgate Church saying, hey, tonight, I want to talk to you. I'll, 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 I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. I'll listen to me. Just listen to me. I want to tell you how much I love you. I wonder if you're here tonight and you're heavy laden. If you would stand to your feet and join me around this altar. Lift up your hands and say, God, I'm opening up my ears, my eyes, my feeling, and my guts. I'm opening up my heart. I'm opening up my mind. I'm opening my eyes. I'm opening up, Father, my ability to hear from you, God, to speak. I'm not going to blow you off anymore. On the way to work tomorrow when I'm driving down the road, I, I'm going to be listening. Pray without ceasing, he said. Always be listening is what he said. Always be listening. I'm going to tell you tomorrow. I'm going to lead your steps and guide your path. I know you're wondering if you should do this or where you should go. and You're, you're questioning and direction and you're, you're, you're confused. Listen to me. I'll speak to you. And when God speaks to you, you're going to have so much faith. It's going to be better than a...
a text message from Pastor Tuttle. It'll be better than an encouraging call from a, a district or general superintendent. I'll tell you what'll be great is when he sits down into that seat in your truck. Come on, and he begins to tell you and talk to you and reveal himself to you. Come on, you're going to say, my God. Oh, I, I wonder with eyes closed, hands raised, if there's somebody that would just say, God, my ears are open. I want to hear from you, God. I want you to speak to me, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray for a mother that needs to hear the comforting voice that there's a father that's not forsaken or he's eternal. I pray, dear God, hallelujah for the dad facing challenges and obstacles that you're with him, you're his counselor, you're his assurance, you're his strong tower. I pray, dear God, for the sinner tonight confused in the darkness of life, find, trying to find their way what's right, what's right this man says that and that preacher says this and this and mom is saying that but, but God just speak to me tell me the truth, show me the truth if you'll knock he'll, he'll answer if you'll seek you'll find yes yes I want to hear I want to hear from you God I want to hear from you I wonder if you just reach over and lay your hand on your friend, on your brother, your sister. Before we go home, as we pray over each other, I believe there's a sensitivity to the voice of God. As God is going to speak. God's going to speak. God's going to speak. There he is. Come on, God's maturing our church. I feel this is part of the maturity. As we continue to grow and God continues to increase, we're going to get to the place where you've got to become able to hear from God. Come on, church is always going to have great leadership and the word will speak and it'll come to the corporate body, but God's going to teach you how to hear from God. Come on, He's going to give you, come on, He's going to teach you how to hear His voice. He's going to let you see, yeah, that's me. You're going to see the miraculous. I, I speak it, I feel it in the name of Jesus. I feel it in the name of Jesus. Somebody's going to have a miracle happen this week on your job. God's going to speak to you about a situation. Come on, I want you to answer. Come on, I want you to answer. Make a promise right now. God, when I, see, when I hear it, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to worry whether or not they think I'm weird because it might be a miracle. I'm not going to worry about what they're going to say because there's a miracle behind that door. When you see it, when you hear it, when you feel it, when you know it, I need you to declare it at your job, at your school. Come on, wherever you're at, and let God get glory let God speak in this earth hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you for this great truth thank you for this great truth Lord hallelujah I wonder if we could just give him praise all across this house on a Wednesday night oh God you've been good to me I didn't know which way to go. But you spoke to me, God. Hallelujah. You know what? If you have kids, what you should do, teach them how to hear from the Lord. You ought to take this little Bible lesson, bring it down to G rated those kids I tell you God will speak to your kids wouldn't it have been great if you'd have known how to hear from God when you was 10 years old through your teenage years amen it's a scary world if you've got teenagers it's a scary world if you've got kids but I'm thankful we've got kids that know how to hear from God God's speaking to them Why don't we give him great praise? Lord, we love you. Thank you for this night, these people, your name. Thank you for your glory that's evident in this place for restoration, for healing, and anointing. We give you praise. And as one people, we say in Jesus' name, we're, late. we're uh, rejoicing with Sister Jo Lynn Mills. She's engaged. Amen. To be married.
bless you. And uh, greet 17 or 18 people. We might want to bump it up to 25. We have a lot of people.